Eighth. As a woman, this hits differently for me. Women, girls, mothers, they have a right to exist freely in our community without fear of something heinous happening to them. She's going to do whatever she um, got to do to take care of her family. Her best friend, Pino yeah. William, told us about the woman she was. If I was there, it would happen. We always made sure we got home safe. Police say Dixon's body was found Monday afternoon near East Raymond Street and South Sherman Drive on Indy Southeast side. All right, what's up with it, y'all? So look, man, I'm back again with another video, right? And before I jump into this video, I do want to start this off the correct way with some positivity. I just want to tell all my supporters out there that's rocking with me consistently on the day-to-day -day basis that I definitely do appreciate y'all. And even if you just became a supporter recently or in this very video right here, I'm talking to you as well. I hope that everything is okay with you out there physically, mentally, and spiritually, and I'm wishing y'all nothing but the best in every aspect of your life and when i say this i'm genuinely just talking to my supporters and to those who reciprocate the same energy back to me and also i want to see y'all nothing but peace blessings and prosperous energy our way now we got a lot to talk about with this situation right here but before we do i do want to say r.i.p to this beautiful young lady by the name of shun i hope i'm not saying her name the wrong way but yes she's a 30 year old lady who lost her life and it's so crazy and unfortunate that she lost her life in this manner especially after just being at work and actually just trying to provide a living for yourself you know it's just so sad and unfortunate that so many people are out here they're lascivious they're evil they're demonic and all type of different things like that and i've been saying that a lot lately because that's really what's going on out here in this world and if you don't know i'm into criminology a lot i really do like crime videos but i hate the things that do happen in the midst of all of this so you know i bring these videos to spread awareness also for my family to watch my daughter to watch and different things like that you know i'm just trying to make sure that people can understand and see that these days are very very wicked and people need to be out here on their p's and q's in every situation no matter what it is now i'm not going to victim shame or victim blame anyone because different things do happen and people just get caught unexpectedly in a lot of different situations so don't get me wrong when i say what i just said but you know back to the story at hand i'm just letting y'all know you know a lot of the times I don't be bringing these type of videos, but I've been bringing them a lot more lately because as I've been seeing, there's been a shift in the atmosphere with the energy and different things like that. It's like something took place not too long ago and it just messed up the whole world. And I mean, the world has been going through a lot of different things, true enough, but it's like right now something just shifted. And that's just something that I want a lot of people to see and be aware of. But anyway, go. let's get straight into this situation at hand. So, um, actually, she was getting off of work. She called the Uber, a ride share, however you want to put it. And this crazy fucker by the name of Francisco Val Valadez, I think I'm saying his name correctly. But if not, it will be corrected in the video. But basically, long story short, he's 29 years old. And for him to actually do what he did to her is just crazy to me. He took her life. They said that he SA'd her. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's actual assault. You know, it's an S that goes in front of that, too. So y'all get what I'm saying when I say what I say. But, you know, basically, he did what he did, took her to a wooded area, and left her there. Now, one thing that I am very, very happy that she did do was have her location on so her family and friends could find her instantly. And I think that this was very, very crucial in to finding out who did this to her. You know, without them not knowing certain things in the sequence of events of things that took place that night or that morning, however you want to put it, they wouldn't have been able to find this guy, in my personal opinion. You feel me? They're just me and my thoughts. So I do respect and like the fact that her family was on it. They checked up on her. They made sure she was good. And they got this shit taken care of fast as hell. And I also want to shout out the police department down there for doing their due diligence and getting this shit taken care of. Now, this crazy fucker ended up admitting to everything. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get into the video. I do have a press conference with more details at the end as well. I say, man, be careful, keep your weapon, and stay dangerous. It's hard for me to say that. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want people to be out here on negativity and violence and stuff like that. But you got to be on 10. You got to be on point. And sometimes, man, you know, when you got that good feeling about anything, follow that feeling. Because a lot of the times, man, people did lose their lives because they didn't follow that feeling. Not saying that this is the case right here, but I'm just saying that in general. And y'all know what I mean when I say that. But anyway, let's get straight into this video. I don't want to know your thoughts and opinions. Make sure y'all hit the like button because I'm dropping consistent content. And if they have a GoFundMe or anything like that, I will be posting it in the comment section. You know, I feel like a lot of the times, man, people just do stories and don't want to show the family's love. And y'all already know if you've been rocking with me i always got to show some type of love but i see a lot of people be needing help too as well with these funerals and stuff so yeah and i also donate as well y'all don't be knowing
doing it, I just have to say that because somebody might be saying, you you need to donate too. I do. I just do it anonymously. So if you see anonymous on some of these videos I do on a GoFundMe, that's me. Let's get into this, though. This is 30-year-old Chanty Dixon. She's a hustler. She's going to do whatever she um, got to do to take care of her family. Her best friend, Pino yeah. William, told us about the woman she was. If I was there, it would happen. We always made sure we got home safe. Police say Dixon's body was found Monday afternoon near East Raymond Street and South Sherman Drive on Indy's southeast side. Court documents say the family became suspicious after they didn't hear from her after she got off work Sunday morning. The family filed a missing persons report on Monday morning. Court documents say 29-year-old Uber driver Francisco Valadez told police he picked Dixon up from her work around 3.30 Sunday morning. He attempted to have sex with her in his car, but got angry after a fight with Dixon, and he shot her. Court records allege Valdez dragged her body from the car, assaulted her, and left her body in a wooded area. We don't deserve to be treated this way in our community. And uh, I'm so sorry. An Indianapolis rideshare driver is arrested for after allegedly killing a female customer. Fox and Tonight, Jesse Wells spoke to the woman's family and to IMPD's police chief about the case and has the very latest. The victim's family tells me they tracked her phone down to these woods where they found her body and called police. Less than 24 hours later, IMPD had the suspect in custody and are now preaching a message of prevention. Just after 1 o'clock Monday afternoon, in these woods, on Indy's near southeast side, a woman who had been reported missing hours earlier was found with a shirt pulled over her head. Police believe 30-year-old Chanty Dixon had been sexually assaulted and shot to death. This is just disgust uh, all around, and it did not have to happen. Police claim a 29-year-old Uber driver, Francisco Valadez, picked up the victim from work early Sunday morning and drove Dixon to her home, this apartment complex, just a few feet from the woods where she was murdered. According to this affidavit, Valadez gave conflicting stories, but eventually admitted to sh the victim while trying to have with her. After dumping Dixon, the suspect confessed he tried to have with her again. This is a family's worst nightmare. We're disgusted by these allegations. Finally, formal charges by the prosecutor's office in this case are still pending. In the meantime, IMPD asks anyone who may have had a suspicious encounter with the suspect using rideshare in recent weeks to contact their department. Jesse Wells, Fox 59 News. All right, Jesse. Thank you. Officials with Uber sent a statement saying their heart breaks for the victim's family, adding that the details of this case are atrocious and that they will assist police however they can. Meanwhile, there are steps that police recommend taking to protect yourself on a ride. They say making sure that the car that pulls up matches the description from your rideshare app to share your trip with a trusted family member using the location app. You can also track the ride by watching your own Maps app so you know where you're First at five, an Uber driver arrested for police say the woman he picked up early Monday morning never made it home and now a family is heartbroken. This is uh, disgusting, it's disturbing, uh, and we, uh, uh, Ms. Dixon especially, her family, no one deserves to be treated this way in our community. Tonight, police are reminding the community to contact them with information and stay vigilant when using rideshare services. You know, we told you Monday on the news at 5 o'clock, the investigation began when a woman was found near a wooded area on the southeast side. Police say 30-year-old Chanti Dixon's mother reported her missing that morning. 29-year-old Francisco Valadez was arrested for... IMPD says he picked up Dixon around 3.30 in the morning and according to court documents told investigators he shot her in the head. Women, girls, mothers, they have a right to exist freely in our community without fear of something heinous happening to them. They have a right to walk, bike, order a ride share without fearing something bad will happen to them. Investigators were able to track down Valadez through Dixon's Uber history and his license plate number. IMPD reminds everyone to avoid sharing personal details with rideshare drivers. Don't sit in the front seat and make sure you share your ride details with someone. In a statement, Uber says Valadez has been banned from the platform and they will help police with the investigation. 
I hate when they say little stupid stuff like that. He's been banned from the platform and things like that. Bro, what else he going to do? He in jail. And, I mean, I can kind of understand them trying to ease it, ease the pain and make it, you know, it's like a coping mechanism, I guess, they're using for different families and stuff like that. But I want to say that they need to take more time out in evaluating these people because I heard a lot of people saying that they get on at these Ubers and stuff like that, these Uber jobs and ride shares and stuff like that very, very easily. They're making enough money to the point where they can do proper screening. And sometimes they need to have an extra person in the vehicle. Make that a requirement. Have somebody that's employed with you guys. That way that they can be in the vehicle as well so they can see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? They could possibly, you know, help out. Potentially be a lifesaver and things like that. They're making way too much money. They like this straight profit. They ain't got to use their own cars. They ain't got to use nothing. They give you a little old stick in your car and you go on a little light, whatever the hell it is. Y'all already know what I'm talking about. They need to take more time out to make sure that they can go ahead and properly secure these people who are spending money with them because they're making millions and billions of dollars with these ride shares. But let's get back into it though. To 9 and 11, we want to take a closer look at the moments before investigators say a woman was by her rideshare driver on the southeast side of Indianapolis. Right now, 29-year-old 29 29 year Francisco Valadez is under arrest. Now, we just got the court Funky documents fucker. in this case. Our Logan Gay has been combing through them tonight. Logan joins us to break it down for us. Logan? Those documents say Francisco Valadez told two different stories to investigators before admitting he 30-year-old Shanti Dixon. He That's reported crazy. to police she made a comment that angered him. Police say Valadez picked Dixon up around 3.30 Sunday morning to take her home, but she never made it there. Investigators tell us he took her and then left her body in a wooded area near Raymond Street and South Sherman Drive. Court. Documents say Valadez told detectives he dragged Dixon's body from his car and put it behind a concrete barrier. Neighbors tell 13 News Dixon lived just yards away and had just moved in. It's pitiful, man. It affects us a lot because now it's like we don't know. You know what I'm saying? And most of the girls out here are single moms and stuff. There's not a man figure there. So, you know, and some of them come in late at night. You know, it, it, it's disturbing to know that it's not even safe to even come home anymore. It's kind of disturbing. According to court documents, Valadez was working for Uber that night. Police urge anyone who encountered Valadez as a driver to come forward. Uber confirms Valdez has now been banned from driving for the company and they will assist IMPD with the investigation. All right, Logan, thanks so much. And police tonight are reminding people that rideshare services are generally safe to use, but they do recommend sharing your ride with people that you know. Verify the driver and the make of the car and trust your gut. All right, I want to begin by acknowledging the Okay, family. okay, okay. So this is the press conference. I done said basically everything I needed to say. I just want to say RIP to her again. I want to send my love and condolences out to the family. I'm sending y'all healing energy as well. I just hope that everything can be okay with y'all. I know that's easier said than done, but a lot of the times, man, you know, we just fall victim to people out here and their negligence and their lustful, evil-ass ways. I just want to say, man, be careful. Keep your weapon. Make sure you stand on point. If something don't feel right, just don't do it. And make sure that everybody is knowing where you're going. Now, I know people be having little sneaky links and different things like that. You can tell one of your friends or something. And I really don't advocate for that. You know what I'm saying? Put people in your business. But if you do deal with somebody that's new especially, do that. Let people know. I don't give a damn. There's no way in the hell you should be out here dealing with somebody that's brand new and not actually like having people to know where you are or who you with. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got to necessarily have your location to go spot for spot where you're going and different things like that. But, you know. If you want to, do your thing. I just feel like everybody should be safe. Do whatever you feel is best. I'm going to say that. How about that? Do what you feel is best. I want to say RP to her again. Send my love and condolences out to the family and friends and anybody out there that had the genuine love for her. Other than that, I'm going to let them say what they got to say, and I will holler at y'all later on another video. Got All right. All right, I want to begin by acknowledging the family, friends, and loved ones impacted by the horrific we are going to briefly discuss today and just... Also, I think it's important to acknowledge the family, friends, and the victims of all of the murders, uh, victims in our city. They all deserve uh, justice, and they all deserve, uh, you know, their their particular issue to be highlighted. So I want to recognize them today. The information we are about to share reflects what we believe to be an isolated incident. However, we have more work to do. We felt we needed to share with all of you 
our community and do all we can to spread a message of prevention to never let something like this happen again here in our community. And as I mentioned at the beginning, talking about and violence, I want to just quickly say to um, our community that remember you have a, an obligation to help us in our fight against crime and that when you see something you have to let us know you have to intervene when you know you can prevent violence and we all have to learn to better deal with our emotions in a way that doesn't lead to picking up a weapon and taking a life so specific to this uh, incident, what I'm going to share with you now is preliminary. It's just, it's not all the facts, uh, but here's what we know so far. Yesterday, September 9th, uh, a missing person report was filed with IMPD. Officers were told that a Chanty Dixon was missing since early Sunday morning. Uh, detectives were told that she was picked up around 3.30 a.m. Uh, by a rideshare driver. Uh, to be taken home. Uh, no one had talked to her since that time. Yesterday afternoon, at just before 1 p.m., IMPD Southeast District officers were dispatched to the 1800 block of Wagner Lane on the report of a de deceased person found near a wooded area. Officers located an adult female there, later identified by the Marion County Coroner's Office as the missing woman, 30-year-old Chanty Dixon. Due to the unusual circumstances, uh, homicide was notified and began their investigation. Along with the homicide investigators, the Marion County Forensic Services Agency and the coroner's officer's office conducted their evidence and detectives uh, canvassed the area for witnesses and surveillance cameras. Quickly, uh, a, um, a, a suspect or a person of interest was identified. Detectives were able to place that person into custody, and after an interview, they arrested 29-year-old Francisco Valadez, who was preliminarily charged with uh, one part I, I mentioned, I failed to mention. It was uh, uh, Ms. Dixon was found to have uh, injury consistent with a gunshot wound. Preliminary information suggests that the suspect was a rideshare driver, and he had picked up. Dixon just prior to her. One thing I want to ask the community now is that anyone in our community who may have had an encounter with this man, uh, hopefully the, the media will share this picture, uh, the, his booking photo with all of you who may have uh, had an encounter with this individual over the last several months as a rideshare driver or otherwise, or have in, information on this particular incident to come forward. You can call our homicide office at 317-327-3475 or Crime Stoppers at 262 TIPS. Obviously, this is a preliminary charge of murder. I anticipate additional facts uh, being discovered and additional charges on this individual as we move forward. Those decisions will be made by the Marion County Prosecutor's Office. Like I said at the beginning, um, although I'm not getting, getting into the individual facts, those, those facts will be known to everyone once the probable cause is available. This is uh, disgusting. Uh, and we, uh, uh, Ms. Dixon especially, her family, no one deserves to be treated this way in our community. And uh, I am so sorry to her family uh, that we're here today. And with that, I'll turn it over to Assistant Chief Cummings, who has some additional uh, things to say today. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. So good afternoon. Um, as a woman, this hits differently for me. Women, girls, mothers, they have a right to exist freely in our community without fear of something heinous happening to them. They have a right to walk, bike, order a ride share without fearing something bad will happen to them. This is a family's worst nightmare, and we extend our heartfelt condolences to her family during this trying time. We're disgusted by these allegations. This occurred in a residential neighborhood with children getting off the bus nearby. We commend the hard work of our detectives in this case 
in which an arrest was made in just a matter of very short time, a matter of hours. Excellent work by our police department. I also want the community to know that at this time, we believe this to be an isolated incident. Ride shares continue to be an excellent and a safe option to use when you're out in our community. Socializing, touring, they continue to be a safe and excellent option to use. We encourage anyone who's using a ride share to always check the make, the model, the name of the driver. Check those with your app. Make sure that it is the person that your app is indicating should be the person who is picking you up. There's an option in your app for you to share your ride with people who you know. They can track your ride as you go along. They can monitor the progress of your ride and see where you are within your ride. If something doesn't feel right to you during your ride, you can ask the person to pull over and you can get out. You can call 911. And last but not least, trust your instincts. If the driver pulls up and it doesn't feel right to you, don't get in. Trust yourself. I myself use ride shares and I follow these tips. Women, you have a right to exist in this community safely and you have a right to use these ride shares safely. Trust yourself. Chief. Uh, we'll take some questions. Just, just, just know that the, this is still an ongoing investigation, and I uh, assume over the next 72 hours there'll be a full published probable cause affidavit that will give you more facts. We also want to be sensitive to the family here that the details that we share are appropriate uh, given the grief that they're all that they're feeling at this point in time. Uh, Chief, how was he able to locate the suspect so quickly? Well, I mean. It, Obviously, technology, when you use rideshare apps, there's certain information that's available on those particular apps that, that, that helped us lead us to an individual who we were able to interview fairly quickly. And based on uh, those interviews, uh, the detectives felt like they had enough information uh, to make an arrest. So uh, utilizing the technology that exists on your own phone and through uh, these rideshare apps, as the, as the assistant chief mentioned, that these, th these apps have done a, a, a lot of work to try to make sure people are safe. And so adding on to what she said about using the apps there is also tell people where you're going, that you're in an app when you're expected home. Those things are important too uh, as you utilize these services. Yeah, I mean, we, I'm assuming, I, I know I use them. I use them all the time when I'm, I'm out of town. I've used them in our own city. I have never had an, uh, an opportunity to feel unsafe in, in, in any of those opportunities. However, um, I know that's not everyone's experience. And so uh, using those tips that you heard from the assistant chief are important. Um, some other ones uh, that to think about is, is don't talk about your personal information on there. You don't, you're not required to have a conversation with the individual driver in there. So uh, you can be polite and say, you know, this is not information I want to share with you. I just want to get from A to B, a to B uh, without having a conversation. Uh, we, we talked about sitting, uh, sharing your location. Make sure you sit in the back seat. Make sure you wear your seat belt. Um, um, track your route. Have your phone available that if it, it's necessary to call for help immediately, you can have that at your fingertips on and ready to go if you uh, feel like the, you you need to do that. And, and like the chief said, is, is in the trip if you need to get it. If you don't feel comfortable, you don't like where this is headed, you don't like the conversation that's being had, tell them to pull over and then get out and call 911 if you're not safe in that area uh, and we'll come out and assist you. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure how the victim was found, but someone in the community uh, found them, found them, found the body, and called 911, uh, and that's how we, we found her there. Uh, the motive, um, you know, I don't want to speak outside the probable cause affidavit. Um, I want to make sure that the information that the detectives submit to the prosecutor's office are the facts, true and accurate. I know that I've been given a briefing on it. I, I can't really tell you uh, what the motive is, um, but. What I will say is it's unnecessary. I mean, 
there's very few times in, in life where, in the world where taking someone's life is, is necessary, but this is just disgusting uh, all around and it did not have to happen. Uh, this is a family that's, that's been ripped apart. This woman is gone from the, from the world unnecessarily uh, by, by an evil act and uh, uh, I'm glad we were able to find this individual as quickly as we did so that, that, uh, that he didn't have an opportunity to perpetuate violence further in our community. Can you talk about My last question, guys. Yeah, I think I've said it mentioned, mentioned at the beginning, I've, I've said it many times before, we have to be better to each other. Uh, you know, murder is one of the hardest things for a police department to prevent. A lot of the time that happens in the heat of the moment and, and situations that are, uh, you know, occurring at that time. A lot of emotions related to it, a lot of conflictual issues to it, and uh, it's frustrating for us, it's frustrating for the community. But our officers and detectives are going to keep working out, uh, going out every day and working and doing our best and doing our part. That's why I mentioned at the beginning we need the community to come alongside of us and uh, do their part. Sorry, I know, yes, yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Is there any way you can identify for us which ride share program it was and how long this man has been working there? I don't know. I don't know how long he's been working there. I think it, when the probable cause affidavit comes out, that information will be spelled out within that affidavit. Thank you so much. All right, thank you.